Hello, Terracon4 here. Going to be doing a simple video tutorial on how to make a train in the train controller. Unfortunately, I'm having some trouble breathing and stuff today, so my voice might be a bit quiet and raspy, so bear with me. So, to start with, go to the train controller, maps, overview map. This is the main map that shows you all the examples set up. And here you got some basic instructions and um, examples on how to actually set up and use the various different parts of the project. So we're primarily going to go over how to make a train car. So control B after selecting a train car to find its section under train controller blueprints pawns. So we're going to make a mine cart that the player can drive around. So, blueprint class, pawn, player, testy, or BP, whatever. So, a uh, quick reference here, the demo cart. We'll get a quick idea with this first. Roughly what we've got to do is we need the front truck. The truck is the thing which effectively would have the wheel stuck to it. These are those independently pivoting parts on the front and back of train cars normally. So you got your front truck and your rear truck. The main car itself, and then we also got some wheels. Wheels are, of course, optional as the monorail demonstrates. It just has the trucks and the cars. So the general way that you're going to want to make this is use a static mesh or such for your front truck, that's your root component, then you're going to want to stick the rear truck, the car, and any wheels childed to that front truck. Or, sorry, not the car, the car's pivot piece. Uh, we have a front and a rear car pivot which says where the car will pivot on each of the trucks. And so yeah, you'll have your front truck, then below that you want the rear truck and that pivot and the wheels, so this would all be stuck to the main front truck. Then on the rear truck, you would stick its rear pivot and the wheels, since those will stay with it as it moves. And then on that front car pivot, that's where you stick your central car, and that's probably where you'll stick anything else. All right, so that's the basics. So for making a new pawn, start off by just making the train controller. And since we're gonna to wanna to be able to move this around ourselves, camera, controller, and we'll get those both in there. And you'll notice here in the train controller on the right, we see the construction area. Here we have keywords, so a string that must be in the name of the front truck for it to be identified. So we can change these, but by default, this is what we just have to have in the name of each of our components. So we can make a static mesh and F truck. And yeah, we're going to use the minecart assets for these. So we've got here a front truck. And we'll make that our scene route. So our truck. This will be our rear truck. Now, the uh, for the purpose of the pivots, you can pretty much make them whatever. I like to use arrows, but if you need the system to handle physics in some cases, then... Arrows don't really handle physics simulation well, so you might want to make an invisible box that has its collision basically removed or whatever, but in this case we'll just use arrows, so we'll need to make pivot points with the F car and R car. So on the front truck, I'll make an arrow, car, and I'll just move this up here as the front pivot point which the cart's going to move around. Then the rear truck, I'm going to give it an arrow too. Arrow that out. Get it up there. And call that R car. Now on the F car, we're going to add a static mesh, center, R. This will be the, the main body piece itself. 
So I want that to be around there. Which means the rear truck should probably be now pulled forward a little bit. And yeah. So, front truck, child under that is the rear truck and the front car pivot. Then under the rear truck, we got the rear car, and under the front car pivot, we got the center car, the main car itself. And here you can see all of these here. Now, let's say we want wheels, because wheels are nice, so let's have the uh, wheels, train wheel, so control C. And we'll just call this one train wheel front one. And there, give it a pair of wheels. Everyone likes wheels. Useful. And then going to the rear truck, we will call that train wheel back one. Once again, just set it there to the right mesh. Got that roughly right way positioned. And as a quick example, we'll just duplicate this so that we got two wheels here. Make sure that these are on the rear truck so that they're childed to and moving with it. And these second ones will just stick back here. Now, in order for the wheels to know how much they should spin, should they be spinning crazy fast or really slow, we need to know the wheel's size. The train controller should have that down here under the track and truck management. So, previous values, but the one one here is the wheel diameter. In this case, that's the diameter of these, which if I recall was around 28. Let's go back to the uh, demo car and do a quick reference there. Yeah, 28. So that's basically the diameter across of these wheels. So, train wheel, yeah, go back to the train controller and just set that to 28 so that they will spin and match the rotation of what we're on. Now, uh, this is going to be a pawn, so we want a camera, so spring arm. And move that back a little bit. So spring arm, zero. And then under that we shall make camera, zero. For the camera controller, you want to add a zero, one, and so on to identify your different ones in case you want to swap to different, well, possible cameras on the same actor. In this case, just zero is all we got. Set the camera, make sure it's right there. And with that, we've got the cord that we need. And let's just get rid of that demo card over there. So with this, the player would be able to have a card that should move. But the player can't actually control it yet, so... Uh, train controller, control to get the reference to that. Camera, control to get the reference to that. So, forward. Move forward. Now, input access events. And for the record, for inputs, you can uh, yeah, reference the player tram. It's got some example ones here, W, S, and D. Uh, here's some example inputs for brakes, the camera, and stuff. But if you wish to add your own input events, go to your project settings, input, and here we've got the X mappings. You could add, like, plus, and you'd make a new one, add plus, plus to get W, S, and various things, and you set one for positive inputs, negative one or such for the negatives. So here's an example, but... That's how you make axis mappings. We're just going to use this one because this project already has that. So, train controller will add forward input. And with this, W, S, and stuff, joystick, all those things, we can go forward and backwards. And let's do a space bar as a brake. Apply brakes. So, control C, control V. When you press it, the brakes are engaged, and when you release, they are disengaged. And since we'd like to be able to look around with the camera, let's get the look, look up and get, what was that, turn, I think. Or you could just use get mouse X, Y, and gamepad right stick X and Y, whatever. Hit put access or the direct. Um, so yeah, for the camera controller, add look at direction so looking up that's yaw or no up is yeah 
you know, side to side, turning up is the looking up. All right, so with that, we should have the basic camera inputs for the camera. So now we want some place to put this. Plus the track's already taken, so let's just make our own example. Uh, basic example of the mesh to track actor is you take it and you give it a mesh. Your mesh has to have enough individual vertices down it so it can be properly bent. Uh, otherwise, it just does a weird deformy thing. So we'll just take this and say, hey, we want a nice hard 90 degree turn here. You know, whatever. Um, if you don't see those, then tap G, because here's like my keyboard with G. I hit G. I hit it again in the viewport. That's how you hide and show various things like these. So if you can't see the spline, tap G, because that's probably the problem. Oh, and also it's probably a good idea to have your uh, snapping, grid snapping enabled, because if you drop this out, as, you know, let's... Oops. <laughs> All right, so let's just set this to value of 100. Okay, man, there's been much 50. Either way, so we've got this located at some specific coordinates. We'll take this and we've got to set the track again. So we can do it like this, where now we can you can hold Alt, by the way, in order to create a new spline off of something. So with this, we can snap and have it moving around on a specific grid, if and you will, which makes it easier to handle everything after the fact. So there's an example of that after the fact right now. Alt click to make this spin at 90 degrees. And because we are on these grids, it just, see, snaps right up to it how we want it to. So that's an advantage of using the uh, grids and snaps. You could remake these as individual actors yourself, which then you'll uh, let people build with during runtime, or you could pre just make a giant path like I've got here in order to go around your map if it's a pre-built map. You know, whatever you need for your case, just, yeah. Uh, the front and back of them comes together, they'll automatically identify something next to them. Though, if you've got multiple tracks next to each other, then you need to do a little bit more complex stuff to handle uh, it, figuring out which one it should use if you want to have a turning branch signally point, um, like a Y bend or intersections, whatever. Otherwise, we'll take our player car and just drop it over here. And by default, if it's within proximity, I'll try and use that. So, play and select the viewport. Ah, right. Um, for the purpose of actually using it, go down here to the select it and auto possess player. Set that to zero so that we will automatically be possessing this. And I hold W and we take that crazy sharp turn and stuff. And you'll see that the wheels more or less are moving as we want them to. Yeah, that's a really sharp turn. <laughs> oh well. And hold dot S to go backwards and space to break. So with that, we've got the basics of our little player controlled one. And the last main thing probably to go over would be the idea of auto movers. The basic idea are these are just actors. There's the basic template one. And then here we've got some specific examples. An auto mover is basically just an actor, which upon something overlapping its volume, it will say, hey, do you have a train controller? And if so, and you're not being affected by another auto over certain things, whatever the case may be, I'm going to manually start changing values on you. So in this case, this one will slow them down. And over here, we got ones that will tell it to, hey, stop and go back in the other direction after you wait a little bit like it's a station piece. So this one stops there, opens, and closes at this station, and then it continues on again. And then when it gets to these two stations, it will stop, open, and then it will go back the way it came. So, 
basic examples. You can reference these. Auto movers are a little bit more complex since you more or less build them yourself, but it's open ended, so you can basically make a train do whatever you want if you know how to code that part. So hopefully with this you've got the basic understanding of how to make your own uh, train car. And probably the last quick thing I just remembered is if you want to chain things together, then that is under the train controller, the train cars array. However, you could take that and uh, do something where you eyedropper stuff here in order to make it. For the record, index zero is the engine, index one is the first car after it, two is the second car. If you do this, then when like you move things and change stuff in the world itself, it can break these eyedropper references. So uh, when things begin play, if you spawn a train in, have that thing that spawns it, set them up. Otherwise, here, begin play is how I set it up in this example case. So all of these things are, the references are grabbed, they're made into an array, and they're all given those values. So that's hopefully everything everyone needs to know for the basics of how to make a train, car, actor, and set up the basics of track and stuff. And hopefully this has been, yeah, understandable and legible despite my voice and energy. Uh, so yeah, try and stay healthy and have a good productive week. Till next time.